If we dig a bit deeper into the backend, of course we have to keep in mind what I explained earlier, that we have decoupled ends, which means we have the front end powered by React with the back end powered by Node Express. And then we also have the database server with MongoDB. Now, because of that decoupled ends thing, our backend is built as an API, which stands for Application Programming Interface. Now, the term API is not just related to web development or to Node Express apps. API is a general programming term and it describes things which expose certain entry points, you could say, which other things can use. For example, if you're building a third party library that should do some user input validation, you might offer certain functions the application that uses your library can call in a certain way to use your library. So basically any library you create needs clearly defined entry points and a way of using them so that other users who did not build your library can interact with it. And for our backend, it's basically the same. We build a Node Express application which defines some entry points, some ways of communicating with it, and only these ways are supported thereafter. If some client which tries to talk to our backend, for example, the React app later, wants to interact with some entry point we didn't define, it will get an error. This pattern is important because it allows us to keep control over our API and control which actions we want to do, which actions we don't want to perform, and what should happen on each action as well as which data we need to perform each action. And when it comes to building such an API, of course we'll do that all step by step throughout this course. It's important to understand though that there are two major kinds of APIs which you can build when you build such a backend. You can build a REST API, where REST stands for Representational State Transfer, and you can build a GraphQL API. Now, both kinds of APIs can be built with any server-side language, not just with Node.js, but of course, in this course, we will use Node.js. And both kinds of APIs can do anything on the server, store data in a database, validate user input, get data from a database, and so on. Now, they work differently when it comes to how requests are received or how requests which are sent to the API should be formatted. A REST API, which is by far the most common and used form of backend web API, uses a combination of different URLs or paths, which are the things after the domain, and HTTP verbs, which is this get, post, patch, delete thing you might have heard of, to build so-called endpoints, which trigger different actions. And I'll show some examples and come back to that in a second. So for a REST API, it's the combination of the URL and the verb used for the request that defines what happens on the server. And when we build such a REST API, we define the combinations of URLs and verbs we want to support. And for unsupported combinations, an error will be sent back if a client tries to use it. For a GraphQL API, that's different. There, we have one URL and one HTTP verb, typically a POST request. So we have one endpoint, which then in turn, however, accepts query commands. So since this HTTP verb is a POST request, when you build a GraphQL API, the body of the request contains a, a query expression that adheres to the GraphQL standard in the end, which describes the operation you want to perform. Still on the server side, when you build such an API, you define which query commands you want to support. So you still don't support everything, but you don't work with different path verb combinations but instead with that query language to trigger different actions and so on. Now, in both scenarios, we execute code on the server. And in both scenarios, we don't directly talk to the database. GraphQL and query commands, that might all sound a bit like we're already talking to a database. But always keep in mind, from your React app, you always send requests to your Node Express app, no matter if that's built as a REST API or a GraphQL API, it just influences how the requests look like, which you send. But in both cases, you talk to your Node Express app. 
And that Node Express app will then do something based on the action which is triggered because of your path verb combination or because of your query command. And then it's your Node Express server which will talk to a database.